Hello and welcome to tutorial 95 in the series of programs and tutorials that focus on TradeStation Easy Language. If you're not part of our email list then go to markplex.com and join the email list there and I'll be uh, happy to let you know when I create new programs or do new tutorials. So today's tutorial is perhaps a little more technical than some of them and uh, what we're going to do is create a function that sorts a vector of doubles and the way it does this it uses a methodology called uh, quicksort and I will explain that it also uses a recursive call so the function looks fairly simple although it's perhaps a little bit more difficult to get your head around so anyway let's uh, let's first of all just explain the way that the program works so what I've got here is just a, a fairly random list of, of numbers which are not sorted by value at the moment. What the program then does is selects one of these values and in my program it does that randomly and it then copies values that are greater than the value that's been selected into a high vector. In fact uh, I don't call it high in my program, you'll see that in a moment, but uh, you'll get the idea which one it is and the ones lower into a low and then the middle it puts into a middle vector what it then does is it calls itself and does that with the, va the results from the high so it goes through the same process again random se randomly selects a value and then puts that value in the middle vector puts the uh, the values higher than that in the higher vector and the values lower than that into the low vector in this case there aren't any lower and then it recurses yet again and it does the same with the the low side and uh, you'll see now if we just look down here that 876 is the highest followed by 100 followed by 87 followed by 76 followed by 20 followed by 1 followed by 1 followed by 0 so clearly that has been sorted so what I'm going to do is just uh, go through and show you this function and just try and talk it through a little bit and uh, hopefully shed a bit of light as to how it works. So we're using the EL system and the EL system dot collections namespaces. We're passing into this function a vector and we've got a integer variable here called iteration which I'll explain where we use that in a moment. So the method itself is a quick sort. We're passing into it a vector and we're outputting a vector from the method. And what we do, we have three vectors, higher end, lower end, and middle. We also have an integer select and a double select value. So we've got the, uh, the vectors declared here, higher end, lower end, and middle. And what we do is when the size of the whole vector, which is the name we're giving for the, the whole vector itself, gets to be equal to one or less than one, then we return the whole vector. For each case we go through and we select a value based on just a random selection. So we select a uh, index randomly and that is a value which is between 0 and the size of the vector minus 1, bearing in mind that these things are indexed from 0. We then find out what the value is at that particular index by looking into the vector what we then do is we add that value into our middle vector and we delete it from the whole vector just so that we don't uh, double count that value. Then what we do is we find out what uh, we go through from value 1 is 0 to the size of the vector. We find out in each case what the value is stored in the value 1 index within the whole vector and then we do a comparison if this new value that we found is equal to the select val then we add it to the middle vector if it's less than we add it to the lower end vector and if it's higher we add it to the higher end vector and then having done that we return a concat vector and this is where you get the recursion because we're now calling quicksort for the results of all this for the higher end uh, not for the middle but for the lower end and so those things recurse within each other which is pretty difficult to under, uh, understand at first but uh, you'll see here that we're calling it uh, the method from within the method and what I've done to try and make this a little bit more easy to understand is I uh, created the infographic 
as you've already seen, what I've also done is created a modified printout with I've added a few additional comments from a demonstration program that we're going to be looking at in a moment. And if you decide to uh, to buy this program, then you'll get all of those together with the demo programs as well. So hopefully that will help you to uh, understand it a little more. Okay, so let, we've got two two demonstration programs. The first one going to uh, oh, and incidentally, I should just explain the concat vector is another method here. Actually, very simply, it just has inputs of three vectors and it outputs a vector. And what it does, it just says the whole vector is equal to value one. Then it adds on to the back of that the value stored in vector three, and then adds on to the back of that the value stored in vector two. So we concatenate the whole vector and then return the vector. Okay, so let's look at the first show me study, which is called Vector Quicksort Test. And essentially, what we do here is we just create a text, a text, uh, a test vector, and we add to it a number of values which I just chose um, arbitrarily. And what we then do is we print that vector before, we then do the sort, and then we print the vector after having done the sort. And I've already got that applied to a chart. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure it is selected. I'm going to turn off this other demo program. I'm going to turn on the quick sort demo. And what you'll see is we've got the before, 76, 20, 0, 100, etc. in an arbitrary order. We then do the sort, and then you'll see that those values have been indeed sorted. And they are the same values that I've got on the infographic and on the, uh, on the annotated printout. But you'll notice I had another program there, and the other program is similar to Vector Quicksort, but this time we create a larger vector. So what we're going to do is just start off with one of 10,000 values, and all this program does is it clears the print log, creates a new vector, and then stores into that vector randomly 10,000 values. It will then calculate the computer date time before doing the sort, do, does the sort of the vector, and the computer date time after the sort, and then it will just print the values stored in the sorted vector. And then it will just print how long it took to do the sort itself. So let's uh, verify that, and then we'll just go to the chart, and I'm going to switch it back on. I'm going to turn off that one, switch this one on, and we just see how quickly this will do the sort. And you can see pretty speedily for a vector of 10,000 values. And if we were to just go up, you'll see that it has indeed, or at least it, it appears that it, it has done a sort. So similarly, we could sort a vector of say 100,000 values. And let's just go and increase the this by adding a zero. So we're now talking about 100,000 elements uh, in the vector. Verified that, and if we go to the chart, you'll see that it's uh, done the sort pretty speedily. And again, you can just go up and look at the different values. And we could even just go for a randomly um, selected a, a million elements in the vector. And again, I'm just going to verify that and then within a few seconds we'll go back to the chart and we should see that the program has done the sort. Okay, it took slightly longer but again it's uh, done the sort and we can just go up and see the various values. Oh, and one other thing I should mention is the, the output file that I mentioned that is included with the program. The way that I created that is within the vector I added some print statements which I've just actually commented out here but uh, essentially it just goes uh, through and prints the the whole vector the higher end vector the middle vector and the lower end vector and uh, if you wanted to experiment with that you would copy it into line 33 uncomment it obviously and also uncomment this iteration here which just increments for each uh, for each iteration. And I think just by looking at this printout makes it a little easier to understand what is going on. And I've just color coded those, get a, a better handle on that recursive nature of the program. Anyway, I hope you might uh, find this program useful. Thank you.